Hey, beautiful friends. I'm coming at you today with a bonus episode. And our topic today is complacency has no role if you want to grow a successful business. Don't be complacent. First Thessalonians 5, 6 says, so be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and ble- be clear headed. Ooh, clear headed. Mm, there's a lot of weight to that, right? It's challenging to be in the online space and not let distractions pull you away in several directions, most of which lead nowhere and end up causing confusion. When you're confused, your community will be confused. And guess what? Confused people don't buy. So how can you focus on being clear-headed? What action can you take to alleviate distractions and be focused on employing your God-given gifts to grow a successful business? Well, first, you can be courageous. Where does courage come from? From God, from believing in the power of the gifts that he's given you and that he has a purpose for you a purpose that's greater than anything you can imagine. Fear and doubt stimulated by what you see and consume online will result in a lack of action. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it is you deciding to take action despite fear. We all have fear. It's going to exist naturally. We know that mindset plus strategy plus action equals results. Courage is a mindset and you can navigate your mindset so that you can take intentional action by following the strategies that you've developed for your business. You can actually download my checklist on how to build a successful business and start implementing effective strategies today. I'll put the link to that checklist in the show notes for you. So you can just click and grab it. Second, you need to be bold. How can you be bold when you're scared and confused, overwhelmed and frustrated and tired and weary? Well, this is where you tap into courage that God alone builds up in you. First Corinthians 16, 13 to 14 reminds us to be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men and women of courage, be strong, do everything in love. And in Joshua 10, 25, we're reminded, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. To be bold, we must cast aside the distractions and fear. Fear may always exist, like I said, but courage will help you take action despite that presence of fear. Take bold action to tell the world you're here to serve them in the way that Christ has called you to serve using the incredible gifts that he's instilled in you. Build a unique personal brand with a positive mindset, implement effective strategies and take intentional action and you can grow a successful business. Your beliefs and thoughts will determine whether you can grow a successful business. So catch those negative thoughts that arise from fear. Catch the doubts and insecurities. Paul reminds us in Romans 12 too, not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Science is just now catching up to scripture when it comes to understanding the mind. The reference for this statement is from a book that I recently read called Switch on Your Brain. I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. Your mind is intricate and miraculously made. It's powerful. And you can change the neural pathways in your brain to redirect your thoughts to be more positive so that you can take effective action and achieve the outcomes that you want to achieve, whether in business or life. Mindset is applicable to both. The mindset work that you do up front 
will help you implement strategies for growth and enable you to take more effective intentional action to produce the results you want in your business. Complacency will prevent you from growing a successful business. When you lack action, you're complacent. If you aren't doing mindset work to navigate fear and doubt and other negative thoughts, then you're being complacent. When you don't take the initiative to create strategies in your business that will help you reach your goals, you're being complacent. If you're not listening to that calling, you're being complacent. And if you aren't taking intentional action guided by the strategies that you develop, you're being complacent. Complacency is a form of denying your calling and God's purpose for you. It's an act of ignoring the incredible gifts that you have that he's calling you to use to serve other people, to help other people who are out there just waiting for you to show up and help them. There are many things going on in our world today that are confusing and ultimately wrong. If you've watched any news program in the past year or two or three, you are aware of the lack of morals and ethics in government, schools, churches, and various communities. People speaking out in truth for Christ are being punished, attacked, and ridiculed. As a result, the majority of us are afraid to speak our truth as, as Christians. As Christian business owners, this is important to recognize. This has been weighing on me for some time. I fear for my children and the lack of values and morals that they are potentially faced with every day. If we as Christian parents don't start standing up for what's right, for what scripture teaches us, what are our children going to have left? Not adhering to our values and standing up for what we know is right is complacency. My comments here are not coming from a place of judgment at all. I stand by the fact that God is the ultimate judge, and it is not my place to judge individuals or their personal decisions. However, it is my job and yours too to speak God's truth when he calls us to speak it. And yes, this does influence my and your ability to grow a successful business. Why? Because if you are not in a place of faith and belief in what God is calling you for and to, you will be confused, not clear-headed, and you will succumb to the falsities coming at you from the world. For example, the new age woo-woo messaging that we are inundated with online. If you rely on astrology, on manifestation without Christ, or on another person instead of the Holy Spirit, you may see temporary growth but it will not be sustainable. In addition, you will not have peace. When you don't have peace, you have confusion. With confusion, you have doubt. With doubt, you have procrastination. Procrastination leads to more frustration, overwhelm, and inaction. And inaction never produces results or outcomes. If you have felt any of these feelings, stop doing the same things that aren't working. Start praying and listening for the answers. Acquire the help you need spiritually, emotionally, physically. So how complacency influences your business? When you are feeling down and frustrated about the world around you, you will not be able to focus on the tasks at hand. What we see in the world around us can be so disturbing that we begin to worry and feel anxious. So here's an example. This is a personal example uh, of my own. I have two sons and a daughter. My sons are now adults, one in grad school and the other with college graduation in sight in the near future. I have confidence in their abilities to make sound decisions. And I find comfort knowing that they know to lean on the Holy Spirit for guidance. They could still make dumb decisions, right? We all have free will. We all have our conscience. And sometimes we do make bad decisions. But for the most part, I feel pretty confident in the fact that they're strong males, they're strong individuals, and they do have strong faith. My daughter, however, is only in high school. And she is faced with more cultural discourse than my sons were at her age. I look at the incredible women of history who fought for our rights as women, and yet 
I fear her for, for her rights as a young woman. And I fear for her safety way more than I did with my sons. Most importantly, I wonder where the voices of women's rights activists are when humans born as men who have not experienced the emotional and physical challenges of girlhood and womanhood are being recognized as women leaders. Is this sound? God created us and designed us as women for a purpose. We are different than men, not only physically, but emotionally and mentally. There is power and benefit in each one of the unique qualities and characteristics that we have as women. No man can understand what it is like to be a woman, just like no woman can understand exactly what it's like to be a man. If God created us in the image of Christ, why aren't more churches and Christians speaking this truth? There's a lack of faith, a lack of Christ in our society, and the result is confusion and chaos. Mental health diagnoses are higher now than they've ever been. But more importantly, I am saddened and frustrated by men and boys transitioning to be women and girls playing women's sports and being awarded awards and celebrated as women. As I said, they, there's such a significant difference. This is not political. This is about me speaking up for women and girls. First, <laughs> these people have not been women long enough to accomplish what natural women have accomplished. And we have some stinking, incredibly amazing women who have accomplished a lot during their lifetimes who have been through a lot and overcome so much. And they represent what we as women strive to be and what we want our daughters to be. Second, our talented female athletes are being discredited and put in unfair situations. The physicality is not comparable. Why should a woman's hard work and talent be discounted by someone who naturally has more muscle mass, strength, size, etc. I'm going to stand with Riley Gaines Barker on this one. She's fighting that fight, and I have so much respect for her that she's standing up for what Title IX was originally established for. Third, why are parents' rights being stripped away by the government, schools, and communities when it comes to guiding their children and helping them get the mental, emotional, and physical care that they need? And shame on the companies not using natural-born, talented, strong, inspiring women to promote their products. There's a plethora of women working diligently to serve and support others, paving the way for our youth to live incredible lives. What is the plan here? To create more confusion in the minds of our youth? We aren't lacking in beautiful, talented young women to do these commercials. And fifth, we all need to be in prayer. We live in a society that has put God in the back seat, has alleviated living by lifelong values, left morality and ethics at the curb and is stripping away the rights of parents, women, and Christians. This has nothing to do with race or ethnicity or political affiliation. It's not a political statement. This is a spiritual crisis. The good news is that God has the final say over anything Satan puts in the world. That gives us hope, especially in this season of Easter. I want the best for the next generation. I've never considered myself a women's liver. Male bashing is not my cup of tea, but I do not like that no one is speaking up. I shouldn't say no one. There are a few people. There are some people standing up for the future rights of our daughters and how they are going to be represented in the world. This quote that I'm going to share with you sums up why I'm speaking up for the girls and young women coming up behind me, especially my daughter. Raise a daughter that people are a bit scared of. Teach her to be fierce and independent. Teach her not to care. 
what people think. Raise her to be a little warrior who is going to change the world and make a difference. That quote is from the Barefoot Truther. To that quote, I add, raise your daughter to trust, love, and welcome the one true King, Jesus Christ, into her life as her savior and guiding light. Raise her to be bold and courageous in her truth. Don't let your rights slip away. Our rights as parents, Christians, and women are being stripped away piece by piece. If this isn't making you anxious or worried yet, the wave of anxiety and worry will arrive sooner than later. We have worked too hard to get to where we are. This chaos and confusion will ultimately have an impact on not only your ability to grow a successful business, but also potentially your rights when it comes to who you hire, how you raise your children, whether you are discriminated against as a Christian or business owner, et cetera. Not to mention when you're worried and anxious, you will not be clear headed and focused. It's time for all of us to stop being complacent, to stop letting fear hold us back and to start standing up, taking up space and grow businesses that create an impact and a ripple effect of good in the world. If nothing else, for the young women coming up behind us. I want to emphasize two scripture verses to help you navigate the insanity of the world we are living in. And when I talk about the insanity of work, the insanity of the world. I'm not just talking about this gender transitioning and all, the gender crisis and all of this stuff that we're experiencing right now. I'm talking about the world as a whole, the the cultural fighting, the racism, the prejudice, the incredible amount of poverty that we have here in the United States as well as around the world. Food insecurity. There are so many insane chaotic things that are occurring right now. It's frightening. And if you aren't aware of what's going on, if you aren't aware of the high prevalence of sex trafficking and all of these other things that are going on, including in the United States, guys, including in the United States, the land of freedom and prosperity, please educate yourself because Things are changing and we need to stop being complacent, make ourselves aware and fight for what we believe in, stand up for what we believe in, for the future generations, for our children, for our daughters. So the two verses I want to share with you are Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse tells us God will answer our prayers if we come to him out of belief and trust and thanksgiving, gratitude. And 1 Peter 5, 6 to 7 Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And lastly, I pray over you that God will calm your hearts and quiet your minds, that you hear his amazing calling for you and his guidance on your mindset and the strategy and action needed to grow a sex, to grow a successful business and to have an impact for positive in the world today. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. I shared a lot of my thoughts, my passions, and I hope that you'll respect that. And I hope that I give you the, the courage to be bold, to not be complacent, but to step into your calling, to serve your purpose and other people and be who God's calling you to be. Until next time, have a great week.